how Hindu nationalism caused drama in Maryland's election race for governor. Lieutenant Governor candidate, candidate Aruna Miller, who served in Maryland's House of Delegates from 2010 to 2019, is facing backlash from Maryland voters due to her history of accepting donations from Hindutva-affiliated donors as she pursues the state's second highest executive office. The influence of Hindu nationalism in U.S. politics received attention in 2019 when an investigation revealed that former Congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard's campaign received funding from leaders in the U.S. chapter of the uh, RSS, an Indian Hindu nationalist paramilitary group. Scott Weber of Maryland Progressive Voices at a press conference on July 11th detailed Miller's association with Hindutva donors over, for over a decade and attending events hosted by the Overseas Friends of the BJP, or OFBJP, the international wing of India's ruling BJP party. Oh, uh, one such event that Miller attended was a banquet celebrating Narendra Modi's election to the office of prime minister in India, in which Miller spoke bold praise of Modi. In May of 2022, uh, referencing her attendance at the OFBJP banquet, Miller posted on Twitter, quote, I attended an event a decade ago before any authoritarian action he took as prime minister. This misleading response fails to acknowledge that before his time as prime minister, Modi had been banned from entering the U.S. for nearly a decade due to his culpability in the violence in Gujarat in 2002, which killed thousands. Meanwhile, Aruna Miller won't acknowledge the tens of thousands of dollars she has received from Hindutva-related donors throughout her political career. Um, uh, so while, while she won't do that, the competing King Siri campaign for governor issued a statement that publicly refused a donation by a Hindutva tied donor. Why would they want this? Why are they like, what's the, why would they support her? Like, what's the interest? What's the return on investment here? Why would the Hindu nationalists support her? Yeah. The, this is, um, She's had ties to major leaders of uh, BJP supporters and their affiliates in the U.S. for a very long time. So I th think if this is about putting someone in Congress who can help, who, who sympathizes with them, really. You have someone yeah. that will be either an advocate or at least sympathetic for the policy positions that you're trying to push in Congress. Well, okay, so she was, let me be clear, let me back up. She was running for Congress. She didn't win her campaign to get elected into Congress, let me be clear. But she did receive a large donations towards that campaign from Hindu nationalist affiliated organizations or individuals. Um, this election campaign is for her uh, to be the Lieutenant governor of Maryland. So like, you know, president and vice president, there's governor and Lieutenant governor. So she'd be the second in command in all of Maryland um, for this campaign. And she's running as a Democrat. Yeah. So people been saying any pro India um, influence they can get is good problem. Yeah, but I was just asking, I, I, I know the reason, like they're just trying to have more influence in American politics. Um, and that's the way they do it. Um, by the way, she was, she is Indian herself. She's born in Hyderabad, India. Mm -hmm. It's interesting how you think these things shouldn't matter, right? Like you think like if the fact that she's Indian is like one reason why there's, they think like this is a person that they could um bye but you know as you know i just don't i mean if you're an american citizen you're an american citizen the fact that your birthplace shouldn't be like i wish i wish even even like i wish like if you know you could just sponsor anybody i mean even if it's a bad thing i just i i, I don't know why i get so feel so it feels so cringy that oh yeah it has to be somebody who's indian for us to sponsor as a way to us to, to be able to control you know, the American politics. Mm -hmm. you, you can see how people's ethnicity and their birthplace or their other nationality 
still gives you the signal that oh this person would be is more more likely to be loyal to our causes whereas it shouldn't have any influence at all like you're an american citizen so you should be as likely to support the bjp as i don't know a white old man <laughs> I, mean, my, I mean money like for the sake of the money that they're giving you like why should it make any difference anyways this is oh yeah actually never mind i take that back because if she is indian and she has indian background then her pro indian narrative will sell a lot better right like her pro bjp that's narrative, true people like people are like okay we get it like we get why you're saying this you know you kind of you that's your second country right but if a if a white old man all of a sudden is like i love modi oh modi is just the best prime minister ever okay people are like okay so what what there's something going on here like, like let me like let's check the records like who's funding you right now like maybe like she could like fly under the radar That'd be, mm. like, and it also gives her a sense of legitimacy <clears throat> yes yes especially within the democratic party where yeah like lived experience is the only thing that matters <laughs> Yeah, like if people question you, were like, "What did you just said to me?" Like, "Bitch, I'm Indian." Like, are you trying to white explain this to me? Like, are you trying to exactly. tell me? Like, you know, like yeah. So maybe like people are like the within the Democratic Party, like, okay, you're sure, but you know, and dude, for great, okay, like I'm gonna, I'm not gonna question that. Like, you're you're a woman of you're a people of color, so like, <laughs> so I'm a, yeesh, I'm not gonna try, I'm not gonna die on that hill. Right. So maybe that's the reason. Yeah. One thing I thought was very interesting was that so in the report um, that I read about this whole saga, one, the she is very close friends and identifies herself as very close personal friends with many yeah. of the major leaders of the overseas friends of the BJP or of, of BJP, which actually had to register as a foreign agent recently. Um, Wow. And so one part of the drama that happened is that a, a, a competing Democratic campaign received a donation of $1,500 from a Hindu vote aligned individual. Who that individual was, I wasn't able to find like clear explanation of. But they released a statement, which is possibly the first time in history that an election, an American election campaign has publicly refused a Hindu, uh, Hindu influenced money or donation before was they, they said, you know, on this day, we became aware that this donation came from, um, someone, you know, who has a heavy Hindu. Oh, Susie just got cut. I'm going to use this opportunity as to read some comments in the live chat. Am I Forever back? Starting... Oh yeah. It's your back. Your idea is back. Me? Yes. I can hear you say, it. okay. Um, so what was they saying? Oh yeah. So they came out and publicly refused this donation. Not only did they publicly refuse the donation in their statement, they identified Hindutva as a fascist movement. Wow. And they said the same day that this happened, we cut a check for the exact same amount of the donation for an organization called Muslim advocates, which is supposed to work towards preventing anti-Muslim bigotry. And so because they publicly refused a donation of like, frankly, I mean, like five, $1,500, like it's not that significant in the political campaign. Um, it, it's shown a lot of attention to the other people in the, in the gubernatorial race who were also yeah. have this history yeah. of receiving what this was money. Thing? So they, it caused a lot of scrutiny on Aruna. They said no to that money. And they, what did they do with the Muslim organization? They accepted what happened after that. Sorry, I missed that part. Um, they put the money that was donated to them by the Hindutva influenced individual to a, uh, organization to prevent anti-Muslim bigotry. Okay. Um, well, I hope they did the due diligence because a lot of those organizations just promote Islam rather than actually yeah. <laughs> preventing that. Oh, like, oh yeah, we want to fight anti-Muslim hate. How? By promoting Islam, like oh no, <laughs> so like so yeah. I hope they look into what they were doing. Um, okay, let's read some comments. 
Forever Stormy is saying, this is typical of many American Indians. They align with Democrats in the U.S. while supporting Modi in India. They are flagrant hypocrites. There's actually been a lot of very interesting studies about how many Indian Americans are very liberal in the U.S. but conservative on Indian issues. I remember there, there was like a like a legit study behind it within the past two years. I need to go back and reread that. Really interesting. D is saying, as the biggest secular democracy, India does not have U.S. support as it wishes, and that is upsetting to India. I think it was particularly upsetting to the BJP. I think that's a very good point, D, about what are some of the motivations behind this kind of thing. Okay, next. Kenny is saying, uh, true, it would seem as a more legitimate opinion because she's from there. Yeah, yes. it's definitely like a kind of an automatic fallacy our minds make, right? Um... <laughs> Forever Stormy is saying she has the right skin in the Democratic Party. She can't be questioned. <laughs> Basically, Forever Stormy is saying she has the woman of color card that she can use to pro um, shield herself from criticism. <laughs> Yeah, she's a so, woman. She's unfortunately a that works too easily on that side of the aisle. <laughs> go, go have sex with a woman, and that would be even you know you would be like ten out of ten, right? So what? Get the lesbian card there. Be, oh, get okay. The, I was, yeah, because she has the woman card. She has the person of color card. You know, just like as as a politician, if you're a woman, just have sex with a woman. It just does wonders for your career, doesn't it? It's easier it, than it's getting a It's definitely another section. feather in that cap. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a good way to promote lesbianism. It's good for your career. Fuck a woman. It's good for your career. <laughs> <laughs> the way you said that, you're like, go have sex with a woman. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> it's good for your career. I'm telling you. Okay. Oh, my God. I, haven't you, like Susie, as, a, as you yourself, as a member of the LGBT community, hasn't that sometimes helped you as a way for when people are trying to fill up quotas or has it that ever helped you? Not to my knowledge. I'd like to start <laughs> cashing in those checks. Come on, man. Yeah. In politics, it works, I think. Mm -hmm. um, I'm white, so like that's a sin I can't atone for. Yeah. And, you know, okay. Everything else doesn't matter in comparison. Gaijin American is asking, aren't there more Sikhs in the Canadian Parliament than the Indian Parliament? Correct. Yes, yes. Um, this is going to, um, Sikhs are going to take over Canada. Um, Hindutva, <laughs> Hindutva is going to take over the United States at some point, And United States and Canada are going to go to this Hindu versus Sikh war at some point. Muslims, work on Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> Just have a full set. Um, I, I never thought of wild. <laughs> never thought I would say that. Atheist Republic needs your help. We have been the target of many legal attacks by Hindu nationalists ever since our founder Armin Abhabi blasphemed against Hindu deities. We have retained legal counsel to help us defend our access to our community in India. We have started a fundraiser that will help us afford to tackle many legal issues, including judicial harassment and censorship. Whatever you can contribute will go a long ways in helping us in this fight. Link in the description below.